By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a classic old school magic battle for you, red versus blue. So I'm playing against a mono red deck piloted by Yubvak. I've called it Red Harmony because it's got some cool disharmonies in it. And he's taking on my mono blue deck that I've called uh, Blue Suicide because basically I'm killing myself. But more about that in the deck deck section. Before I jump into that section of the video, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to check out the deck decks later. First, go to the magic itself. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Game. So just click on there it'll take you straight to the games and for now i'm going to continue with the deck tech starting with the deck of my opponent yubvak let's have a look and here we see the mono red deck of yubvak and uh it's a pretty interesting deck i have to say it's got some interesting cards i think uh, at first glance it's like your mono red aggro deck right we've got iron claw orcs we've got granite gargoyle we've got juggernauts like just your two three four drop all creatures then you've got your four chain lightnings, your four lightning bolts, your two fireballs. So really like aggression, aggression, aggression. But then there is this interesting side to the deck where we see, in my opinion, the coolest cards as well. Where we have the Sheevan, the Dragon Whelp, um, the Eternal Flame, which is actually better as you as you might think. I play with that as well in my Goblin deck. It's pretty cool. A card from the Dark, uh, two red and two that says deal an amount of damage to any target equal to the amount of mountains that you have and you take half of the damage as well so if you ca if you cast it for the four mana and you've got four mountains to do that you're going to deal four damage to your opponent which is pretty sweet uh, but of course if you have more mountains like this mono red deck has if you time it right you can deal a lot of damage um, and then there are like the interesting cards to me are like above that row where we see the diamond valley combined with the disharmony now disharmony is a super interesting card. It's an instant from red, one red and two that reads, cast this spell only during combat before blockers are declared, untap target attacking creature and remove it from combat, gain control of that creature until end of turn. So what can happen here is, let's say your opponent is attacking with two Sarah Angels, you can cast a Disharmony, gain, gain control of the Sarah Angel and use that to block the Sarah Angel of your opponent. So Disharmony is a potential two for one and just a really cool combat trick that you don't see that often. Now, it can get even better with a Diamond Valley, the card that we see here in the middle between the two cards. So Diamond Valley, a card from Arabian Nights, a land, you can tap it to sack a creature and gain a life equal to its toughness. So that makes a whole different different value to the Disharmony. Like now you can steal the creature of your opponent, block a creature of your opponent, and also if you want to, sack that same creature that you stole to the Diamond Valley and gain life for it as well. So that would make it a win-win-win, right? So it's it, it, it makes Disharmony pretty explosive. And it's, it's really cool to see. You don't see this card that often. And then um, at the bottom row with the artifacts, I see two Knowledge Vaults. And that's kind of makes me excited as well. I think it's pretty cool not to go with a Jam Day Tome in this deck, but rather go with Knowledge Vault. I think it's kind of cool. Both artifacts are for to cast, and both artifacts can kind of draw you cards, but the Knowledge Vault makes it a little bit more complicated. You tap uh, two and then tap it, then it says exile the top card of your library face down. So you basically, what I do is I just put it under my Knowledge Vault when I play it, and then there's this very interesting ability for zero you can sack it you don't have to tap it to do this zero and sack the vault uh, discard your hand right so it goes to the graveyard and then all the cards exiled with knowledge vault go into your hand so if for example um you you're looking for an answer that, that's not in your hand and you have a couple of cards under the knowledge vault you can sack it you can draw it or if your hand's empty of course you can choose to sack the knowledge vault and kind of get some new cards in your hand what i like about the vault is you know it could potentially be around forever and have like 10 cards in the vault and then you sack it and get it now uh, it is risky is it going to stay that long but another thing i like about it is when your opponent will let's say disenchant the knowledge vault in response, you can always sacrifice it and get the cards under the vault. Why? Because you don't have to tap the Knowledge Vault to do so. So it's it's a pretty cool card. I think, again, it's one of those cards that's probably better uh, than, than you may think. So I just wanted to highlight these cards. I think the rest of the deck, like I said at the start of the introduction, is really your, your almost your basic aggro red 
base right of this deck and then we see these really cool cards around it i i like it and i'm really looking forward to play against them talking about that let's take a look at my deck suicide blue and here we see my mono blue deck so this is suicide blue and the cool thing about this deck is i've also called it budget blue in the past because it's so affordable to uh, to make for yourself as well so if you've enjoy if you enjoy blue you're kind of new to the format this is really a deck that you can play and it's it's quite good it's quite strong um so let's just focus on the name now suicide blue because where does that suicide part come from well there are a few cards in this deck that hurt yourself the first card is surrender afrit so this is a three four flyer for one blue and two from arabian nights i mean that's super firepower now this card has been reprinted in revised this is a four and white bordered version the nice thing is the revised version is really affordable so you can just get that for cheap but the downside of this card is it does deal one damage to you during your upkeep. So that's kind of where the name Suicide comes from. And there are a few other cards that kind of hurt yourself as well. You've got Psionic Blast. I love the art of that where you can do four damage to target opponent at instant speed. But you also deal two damage to yourself. So that's of course where that huge headache comes from. I think the, the art on this is very fitting. And then you also have uh, Unstable Mutation. So Unstable Mutation, again a card from Arabian Nights. One blue for an enchant creature that gives your creature plus three plus three. So that's a pretty good boost. Um, but during your upkeep you have to put a minus one minus one counter on your creature. So in the long run you're killing off your own creature. Now with this deck that doesn't really matter that much because this is really an aggressive blue deck, right? You just want to start from the get-go. You want to drop your Flying Man or Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, followed up ideally by a Lord of Atlantis. After that, you start playing your uh, Surrender Befreed. So you just hope to kind of get into that casting a creature every single turn. Then after your turn three, you hope to be in a dominant position and then you're going to keep your counter magic up to kind of protect your board and make sure that your opponent doesn't do anything that can stop your creatures from from attacking now um a nice card here and i've just chosen to go for a full play set is boomerang so boomerang can send back any permanent right which is which is pretty cool uh it also means it works against the maze of if um it works against against aloha uh, but also what it, what it can do is when your opponent for example casts a giant grove on something in response you can of course hey i'm going to return that creature to your hand and then the giant grove fizzles just to give you an example so i find boomerang a very versatile card it is of course always the question do you want to go for boomerang or uh, do you want to go for unsummon so i chose to go for boomerang just because it's a bit more versatile but that double blue does matter so i do understand as well that some people may uh, go for unsummon instead also because when you then have unsummon and, and a counter spell in hand you only need three blue open to basically do both and with uh, with boomerang uh, in in a lot of uh, moments in the game you have to make a choice am i going to boomerang now or do i want to keep my blue mana open for a counter spell so that's you know and and an option you have to take i also really like uh control magic in this deck it's kind of a top end card in this deck uh four mana right you get control of target creature what i like about this is if you can can play this get control of the creature it means they lose a blocker you know and that could just be that that alpha strike that you need to do that final point of damage that you want to inflict by just taking away the blocker so even though that maybe the creature is not that good or maybe next turn he has an answer for your control magic like he draws into a disenchant or something that doesn't matter because just by taking the creature away as a potential blocker it can already do its job and give you the, vic the victory remember this is a super uh aggressive deck right this is what the what the deck wants to do uh talking about like top ends we also have a brain geyser to kind of refill your hand this is kind of an emergency plan right ideally you don't need the brain geyser because you're just going to put so much pressure on who cares you know but if you're kind of stuck if your opponent is stuck let's say on four life maybe the brain geyser can help you to you know get to that psionic blast or get to that key control magic to kind of win the game uh, another interesting card in this deck which is just a one-off i, I kind of like one-offs because it keeps the game interesting uh is sunken city so sunken city is a card for two blue and enchantment from the dark that gives all your blue creatures plus one plus one you've got to pay two blue during your upkeep or else it's destroyed so you may think uh it's not great to two blue upkeep costs you know a crusade for example the white variant doesn't have that but the way I like to look at it is when I deploy my Sunken City, I'm probably going to do it on a board that has a lot of creatures already. So I kind of play it as a sorcery. Then the next turn, if I want to keep it around, I'm going to pay two blue, but maybe I don't, you know, so it just, it, it really depends. I can also see myself playing the Sunken City just for one turn, giving my creatures a boost, dealing some extra points of damage. Remember, this is a super aggressive deck, so each point of damage actually counts and matters, you know, because it, it is a race. I'm, I'm sprinting against my opponent. Anyway, this is my Suicide Blue deck. 
Uh, we've talked about the deck of my opponent, so that means we are ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. My opponent, Yoop, sitting on the left, starting here with a Black Lotus Mountain. What are we going to see? Oh, 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 this is painful. Juggernaut, turn one. He's playing Mono Red today. I'm playing Mono Blue, Suicide Blue. And uh, yeah, this is bad. Hopefully I can uh, find at least a turn one drop. Maybe a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident to kind of chump block here. Or not, just passing the turn. This is a best of five, by the way. So not a best of three, but a best of five today. There's the attack with the Juggernaut and the Chain Lightning. Look at this deck work. Nothing I can do at this stage. Dropping to 12. Oh man, this is looking bad. Hopefully I can find a blocker. I have Psionic Blasts in my deck, but they're of course three mana to cast. Maybe a Boomerang would be uh, would work here. Phantasmal Terrain. Okay, playing a Phantasmal Terrain here on the mountain of my opponent, turning that into an island. That is tough. It's a little change I've made in my deck. I went from four boomerangs to two boomerangs and two phantasmal terrains. I'm kind of testing that out, but so far I'm not really enjoying it much. Here's a stone rain. Wow, he's setting me back. Remember, I want to get to three to possibly cast a psionic blast. So that stone rain is quite good. And playing a Lord of Atlantis here. So this is a two, two that gives all the other merfolks plus one, plus one an island walk. I mean, I'm on seven. I feel like I have to chum block the Juggernaut here. If I let it go through, I go to two. And remember, uh, you know, Yoop's deck has four chain lightnings, four bolts. So I am deciding to chum block here. There's another island. Do I have a Psionic Blast? If I do, I don't have to cast it now. Passing the turn. There's another mountain. There's the attack. So there's a Psionic Blast. But of course, the problem here is that I'm also hurting myself. Dropping to five. Oh man, this is that juggernaut did so much work. I'm on five. <laughs> I mean, that opening that was insane. Oh, there's a bolt. Nice. Now I'm on two. This is this is I'm as good as dead, but let's just let's see where this game takes us. Maybe I've got some counter spells in hand. Okay, there's a strip mine, so I'm gonna strip the mountain. Passing the turn. There's another mountain. Let's see what he can do. He's going to tap. Ooh, he's not going to do anything. Passing the turn. Okay, so I've got some time. Like I said, maybe if I can find a counterspell. Tapping four here, though. Okay, there's a Brain Geyser for two. Drawing two cards. Giving an opening here for my opponent to play some burn. There's a Whelp from the top. So he's going to play the Dragon Whelp. Untapping now. Hopefully I've got something. Control Magic will be kind of sweet. A Surrendip could be a blocker, but that will kill me. Yeah, Surrendip of Freed. I was afraid of that. That is, of course, a big problem. Any Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. So probably I'm just going to die to my own Surrendip here. Remember, I have to take one damage during my upkeep. But, of course, I need a blocker for the Dragon Whelp as well. Okay, there's an Iron Claw Orc also hitting the board. And, uh, yeah, of course, he's not going to attack. So I'm going to drop to one and die next turn to my own Surrendip, I think. I need a little miracle. Okay, there's an unstable attacking here with the unstable and, of course, with the surrender. Kind of going all in here. What else can I do, really? So, 3 4 flyer and the 4 4 Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Looks like he's going to take the damage. So, that's 7 damage. Also, Psionic Blast play, uh, killing myself, committing suicide, which is good because the deck's called Suicide Blue. Okay, this one. <laughs> This was game one. This went incredibly fast. Now, this is a best of five, meaning that, I mean, I still have a lot of chance chances here to, to come back and win it. I can start next game, I guess, but this was brutal. I mean, I don't want this to happen again. So I'm just quickly going to board in some blue elemental blasts and I'll uh, catch up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I'm one game down and on to play. It looks like I've taken a mulligan here. Oh, look at this chain lightning by Yoop. Ooh, there it is. Blue Elemental Blast doing work. So I believe I took a mulligan because after that land, I had five in hand. Let's see if I change the dice here as well. Playing a Flying Man. Yep, four cards in hand. There's the double red. There's an Iron Claw Orc. And I missed a land drop there. So that is pretty painful. Can I find an Unstable? Yes, I can. Okay, that's good. Swinging in for four. Put him on 16. That is something. But I will need lands. If he finds a stone rain here, that would be so bad. Tapping three, are we going to see a stone rain? No, a granite gargoyle. Okay. 
That, that's not great, but it's not the worst either. So he's got the 2-2 two, two flyer that he cannot pump at the moment. No red mana open. Remember, with Granite Gargoyle, you can pay one red to give it plus O plus one. And of course, I have to put a minus one, minus one counter now on the flying man. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, there's a blue elemental blast. So I'm really finding those blasts here, taking care of the gargoyle, attacking for three. So the flying man's doing work. That's seven points of damage from one flying man. That's pretty impressive. Of course, next turn is going to turn into a 2-2. Two, two. There's the attack with the Iron Claw Orcs. Going to put me on 16. And uh, what is Yoop going to do? So I've got four cards left in my, uh, in my hand here. So it seems that Yup is really in the tank here. He is passing the turn. Okay, I'm not upset about that. So I've got a 2-2 flyer. I can put him on 11. Let's see if that works out. Yes, it does. So this flying man has already dealt nine points of damage. And better news for me is that I found a second blue. So hopefully I have counter magic online. There's a soul ring. There's the attack again with the Iron Claw. I mean, the Iron Claw Orcs of Yoop is also doing a lot of work. It's already dealt six points of damage. Now I'm on the, my Flying Man. I mean, it's now a 1-1, one, one, so I can attack, but then he can kill it with the Desert. I am attacking because, remember, the Desert works after damage is dealt, so I might as well just put in that extra point of damage. And uh, you know what? I'm not unhappy. I've dealt 10 points of damage with the Flying Man. That part of the plan is really working. Now, the rest... Of the plan is not working because I'm not doing anything else. There's a second desert. There's the attack again from the Iron Claw dropping to 12. There's a tap. Okay, there's a flying man, but just not that good with a double desert on the side of my uh, my opponent. So yeah, this is tough. An attack for two dropping to 10. I guess I'm kind of lucky that he's not doing more than that. Tapping two blue. What are we going to see here? Okay, there's a Lord of Atlantis. So at least I can now block the Iron Claw Orcs. I mean, should I? There is another mountain. So just a lot of lands here for my opponent. He's kind of flooded in lands. And, you know, I'm missing lands. There's the block. So I'm making a trade here. Untapping. Going to draw for turn. I mean, I can attack, deal deal one point of damage, but then he's going to kill it with the desert. He would be on nine. I don't think that's really a good deal for me at the moment. Five in hand. I really wonder what cards my opponent has. Perhaps he's got like a shattering hand. There's no target for that and a lot of lands. That could be an option. Maybe he's got a fireball and he's waiting for the right amount. Ooh, there's a, a lightning bolt. That's always risky. So I believe I should be on, not on 8, but on, shouldn't I be on 7? I believe I was on 10. Anyway, there's a strip mine. Oh, that is really bad. I was already low on lands, and now that strip mine, so two lands left. Okay, there's land number 3. No surrender of reach yet from my side. Would be quite helpful now. There's another desert. So he's got a lot of mana. He's got like 10 mana. If he finds a fireball, I'm toast. I've got seven cards in hand now. Wow. I wonder what I have in hand. There's a Black Lotus, by the way, being played by Yoop, passing the turn back to me. What can I do? Look at that. I'm discarding an Energy Flux. Okay, so I guess I brought in Energy Fluxes from the sideboard. I wonder why I did that. Perhaps I was so scared of the Juggernaut after game one. So I think what I have in hand here, since I'm discarding, is that I have a lot of counter magic in hand. Let's see if I'm going to counter this. This is the Knowledge Vault, so it's going to draw him cards, right? Yeah, countering this away. And this is tricky always on what should you spend your counter magic right now. Also knowing, of course, that Jupe has two fireballs and, you know, they're lethal right now. He's got enough mana. So maybe I should focus on that instead of the Knowledge Vault. Then again, Knowledge Vault is one of those cards that can get him back in the game, especially if his hand's kind of useless. You know, it's it's card advantage on the long run. Untapping now. Okay, there's a Mishra's Factory. I mean, again, I can attack with the Factory, but he's going to kill it with the Deserts. This is quite an interesting match. It's going much, much slower than... Uh, 
than game number one, that's for sure. There's a Lord of Atlantis, so I've got kind of an, an, an army here. The problem are those deserts. Okay, there's a Juggernaut. Countering here the Juggernaut. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's a wise decision because I can just block the Juggernaut with the factory. It can pump itself. We can trade. And I mean, the Counterspell can, can stop a lethal Fireball. So I'm not quite sure if I'm happy with this decision to counter the Juggernaut. I could kind of understand countering the Knowledge Vault. Then again, I mean, I discarded the Energy Flux earlier. Energy Flux, Black Lotus, Soul Ring, Juggernaut, you know, would have worked on all four of those. Look at this. There's a big attack from my side. Oh, there's a Disharmony though. Counterspell on the Disharmony. Okay, so I guess my hand was full of counter magic. So at least that's something. There's another Disharmony though. Disharmony number two. Wow. That is, yeah. That is insane. Do I have another Counterspell? I've already played out three Counterspells and two Blue Blasts. This game number two, which is kind of sick. There's a Disharmony, so he's going to take my Lord of Atlantis, then he can block my factory, I guess. Yeah, that's what he does. That is what he does. So they both die. I deal one damage with my Flying Man, and of course my Flying Man's going to die to the desert as well. So, yeah. I think I probably attacked because I have perhaps a Psionic Blast in hand and wanted to deal as much damage as I could. Okay, there's the Diamond Valley, so at least he didn't have that when he played the Disharmony. But the Diamond Valley is a problem because he's gonna go up in life again, and I really don't want him to go up in life. Oh, there's a Fireball! Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. Yeah, look at my hand, all full of energy fluxes. I did have that Psionic Blast, so that's why I decided to attack with those creatures. Yeah, I don't know. I also having that 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 brain geyser there the thing is if you go full out on brain geyser oh man this is difficult I, I i think like i said i think i should have been more careful with the counter magic anyway uh i'm dying to a fireball it's now 2-0 for my opponent so i have to win the next game or else i've already lost this best of five so all i can say is i'm gonna do my best i'm gonna try not to suck in game number three <laughs> Game number three. So remember, this is a best of five. So even though I'm behind two games, this is game three. If I win this, I'm back in it. I feel it. I'm on the play. Didn't take a mulligan. Six in hand. I'm feeling good. If I remember this correctly, I boarded out those energy fluxes as quickly as I could. No idea why I boarded them in. But um, anyway, there's a mountain from my opponent. I'm starting here with another blue into Lord of Atlantis turn two. Happy with that. This is what my deck wants to do. Hopefully next turn, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, or even better, Surrender Befreet. That would be kind of sweet. Passing the turn to my opponent, tapping two. There's an Iron Claw Orcs. If it can find another Lord, remember they pump each other. I've got a two, three threes on the board. That would be quite nice. Tapping another two, another Lord. Here we go. Finally, it is working. Attacking here with the three, three. And then the question for me is, am I going to attack again with my full army after that Disharmony fiasco in, uh, in the previous game? Or am I just going to attack with one? Anyway, let's first see what my opponent can do. Are you here playing Mountain number three, Henne Black Lotus? Okay, this is kind of scary. I mean, a, a, a Fireball is kind of good as well, you know, taking, uh, taking out some Lord of Atlantises. Maybe together, multiple ones. Anyway, playing an island. So let's see what I'm going to do in the attack phase here. Okay, just attacking with the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. So I am kind of scared of the Disharmony, I guess. And it makes sense, right? If I would attack her with a bunch of Merfolks, he could take one of my Lord of Atlantises, block them on each other, and I would be left with a 1-1 Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. It looks like he is going to tap. Okay, there is a blue, uh, red Elemental Blast. I'm sorry, uh, on the Lord of Atlantis meaning he only takes two points of damage. Then in my second main, playing a Flying Man and a Surrender Befreet. Okay, that is good, some Air Force. I'm not unhappy about this here. Tapping three, ooh, there's a Gargoyle. Yeah, that is annoying. That Gargoyle, of course, has that ability, one red plus O plus one, so he could sack the Black Lotus. Could, you know, to give it a big butt. Let's see if he does. Attacking here with the Surrender Befreet. 
He probably is just going to take the three damage. So he's going to drop here to, to 12. Ooh, I'm tapping out for a huge brain geyser here. Are we going to see a red elemental blast? No, we're not. Okay, this is big because my hand was empty, right? This is really big. Drawing three cards, kind of refilling my hand here. Hopefully there was something useful in there. If I can get rid of that Granite Gargoyle, I can actually attack with my uh, Merfolk and with my Serendip. So drawing a card for turn four in hand. I really need to get rid of that uh, Granite Gargoyle. There's a Mishra's Factory. Of course, taking damage from my Serendip. That's why I'm changing my life. They're going to 18. Tapping blue. Okay, blue elemental blast. You know, I cannot complain. I saw two of those in game two. Now in game three, another one. No red elemental blast. Yeah, this is great for me. Now I can at least swing in. Oh, I'm going for the unstable attacking. So I keep just attacking with a single creature. Really aware of that disharmony now. Just attacking here. This is six damage. Wow, this is huge. He's going to drop to six, I believe. This is great. Am I finally going to win a game here in this match? Would make it 2-1. There's a Juggernaut. Not really worried about that at the moment. So going to take another damage. And of course a minus one, minus one counter. Meaning I have a 4-5 now. Or sorry, a 5-6 uh, a now. Attacking here, so going to deal 5 points of damage, I believe. So he's going to drop to 1. And there's a Sayani Blast. Okay, finally! For a moment there I thought, can I still win? Can I still play Magic? Yes, I can! Okay, really happy here, making it 2-1. That means we are going to continue with game number 4. If I win that 2, we have a decisive game 5. That's what I'm going for, of course. Game number four, here we go. So now my opponent on the play, starting with a mountain passing the turn. Island, Flying Man, okay, good start. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. Remember, it is a best of five. If I lose this game, it's over. My opponent has won, already won two games. There's the desert again. This is so annoying. Oh, man. I mean, desert, it, again, it's a card that mu that is much better than, than you... Uh, than you think, you know, at first glance, you're like, ah, it's not great. Anyway, playing a second island, passing the turn, so I don't really have an attack. There's a strip mine. Is he going to strip something? Nope, playing in uh, Soul Ring instead. Are we going to see a Gargoyle here? No, a Stone Rain. This is bad news. Okay, Counterspell, yeah, you kind of have to, because if he takes my island next turn, he can strip my other island, and I'm, you know, I've got no lands. So that would be a big problem, obviously. So this Counterspell was kind of important, but... Then again, I don't really want to counter these these kind of cards from Yoop. But okay, it is what it is. Playing a Mishra's Factory here. Unstable Mutation would have been quite sweet. Right? Because then it could have attacked, could have ignored the, the desert. There's a tap for four. Okay. What are we going to see for four mana here? There's a Juggernaut. It looks like he's also going to use the Strip Mine. Yeah, probably going to strip the Factory, right? In response, I'm tapping some man. Okay, there's a Psionic Blast on the Juggernaut, I guess. Yeah, so he played it on the Mishra's Factory, so it's gone. In response, I tapped it for mana. Played the uh, Psy Blast on the Juggernaut. That makes sense. But, I mean, look at my opponent. He kept the Desert untapped. That's so smart. Oh, man. I kind of love it as well. I kind of love to see a card like Desert doing work in this match. I think that's cool. I'm doing nothing, by the way, just passing the turn. Oh, there's a Diamond Valley. That is not great. Okay, there's a Granite Gargoyle. And I'm going to counter the Gargoyle with a Blue Elemental Blast. I mean, if you wouldn't have had the Desert, I would have had so many attacks already with the Flying Man. He would probably be on like 16, 15, 16. But more importantly, I would have the feeling that I'm making progress, you know. Right now, it's such a standstill. There's an Iron Claw Orc. No counter magic, nothing. And the orc, again, kind of useful here in this scenario. Okay, there's a strip mine. I wonder what I'm going to strip. Am I going to go for the desert or am I going to go for the diamond valley? Like, this is, this is a genuine 
like question I have here. Tapping four, it looks like I'm doing neither. What am I gonna do with the four mana? Okay, there's a brain geyser. Oh, red elemental blast, that is painful. That is painful, because again, I'm kind of low on my lance here. Oh, man. That is just really tough. Maybe I should have waited with the brain. These things, after it happens, you start to think, maybe I should have waited until I have counter backup for the brain geyser. Maybe I should wait till later in the game. My life total is still pretty high, but I don't know. Anyway, look at this. Strip mining the desert, not the diamond valley. Kind of showing, like, how good that desert is in this matchup. There's another flying man. Okay, now I get it. I can at least start attacking. But isn't that funny? Like nine out of 10 times, if you ask somebody, what would you strip, the Diamond Valley or the desert? People go for Diamond Valley, right? But right now in this scenario, desert was the better option. Anyway, attacking again with the Iron Claw Orc. I'm on 14. Got two flying men. Can hit him for two at least. Oh, there's an unstable. Ooh, lightning bolt in response. That is a two for one. Or do I have a blue blast or a counter spell? Ooh, blue elemental blast. Okay, that is really good. That is really good. That blue blast was super important because now I'm hitting him for five instead of hitting him for one and losing two cards, basically. Anyway, there's a juggernaut hitting the board. There's the attack for two, dropping to 12. So I could keep my flying man untapped to trade. Or I could attack with it. I mean, I'm on 12. Perhaps I should keep it untapped to trade for the Juggernaut. Then again, well, let's, let's, let's see. It depends what I have on hand. In hand, of course. Only two cards in hand, by the way. If I look at that uh, bottom dice, there are the red ones. Got two. I think that shows my hand size. This is difficult. Like, do I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit in the tank here. You can see me think, do I run an attack for three and a flying man, put him on 10, but then I'll take seven on the crackback, go to five. Maybe I've got a boomerang in hand. Like, I haven't seen a single boomerang yet. So interesting here. Just attacking with the one flying man. Going to put him on 13, passing the turn. So that probably means I'm planning on blocking the Juggernaut with that 3-3 three, three Flying Man. Three cards in hand for me, by the way. One card in hand for my opponent, so he's on top decking mode. There's the attack. Looks like I've got... I've got a play to make here. Tapping two blue. Are we going to see that boomerang that I talked about? Okay, there's a boomerang. And now I wonder what I'm going to boomerang. Like what I could do here is block the Iron Claw or kill the Iron Claw Orc and, and boomerang the Juggernaut. But then again, the turn after, because he's probably going to recast the Juggernaut straight away, the turn after I've got a problem. Because then I can no longer block it on the Flying Man and, and kill it at least. I mean, it can still block with it, but it would just be a chump. Anyway, I am going for the play where I want to block the Iron Claw, but of course, Yoop is using his Diamond Valley to sack the, the Orc to the Diamond Valley, so he's going to go two life up, recasting his Juggernaut. And I now have a 2-2 two -two Flying Man. There is another island. So I can attack him here for three. I wonder if I have an answer for the Juggernaut. There's another Psionic Blast on the Juggernaut here. So I'm going to go to 10. And okay, there's Granite Gargoyle. Hmm, that is not great. Going to take my turn. And now my Flying Man is just a 1-1. One -one. Both are just 1-1s. One -ones. Okay, there's another unstable. Attacking here with a 4-4. Four -four. Or not. Yes, I am. Okay, and then he's got enough mana, of course, to, to pump the Gargoyle. So I wonder if playing this unstable so quickly was a good decision. Because I didn't have a good attack. And of course, he cannot just keep enough mana open. Oh, there's a Wheel of Fortune. 
That is pretty cool. Losing a counter spell here, but choosing not to counter. That kind of makes sense. Like we both want cards, right? I'm on 10, he's on 12. Gonna refill our hands. There is a Black Lotus. He's got so much mana. I mean, you know, it's just bad. Passing the turn here, I guess, because my flying man is dying to the unstable mutation. And now my flying man is a 3-3. Three, three. There is a Mishra's Factory. Yeah, I think playing that unstable was, was really a bad move. Should have just kept it in hand. It was probably just one of those things where I thought, ooh, unstable, put on Flying Man, kind of on auto mode, and then realizing, wait a minute, he's got the Gargoyle, that's not going to work. Anyway, also playing a Lord of Atlantis. So six cards in hand passing the turn. So not, not doing that much with all the new cards I got from the wheel. I mean, this is concerning. He's got the Lotus. He's got so much mana. Again, if he has a Fireball and I, I cannot counter it, I think I'm going to die. Ooh, he's just passing the turn, though, not doing much. So my Flying Man is a 2-2. I could consider just attacking with everything for some damage, but then again, is it worth it? Okay, there's another Lord. So I've got two Lord of Atlantis. So kind of the attack with the Lord could work. Then again, he can block on the Gargoyle, pump it, kill it with the Desert. I mean, you get you get so little back, and you and you got to pay so much, right? If I would attack, anyway, my opponent here playing a Hammerheim, and Hammerheim can take away a Landwalk ability, which which could actually be um, relevant in this match if I can find like a Phantasmal Terrain, give him an island. But then, of course, I would play that Phantasmal Terrain on the Hammerheim, I guess. Anyway, it looks like he's passing the turn back to me. Oh, I've got a 1-1 one, one Flying Man now. It's looking so tiny. This is not good. Tapping one blue. What am I going to do with the one blue? Okay, there's a blue Elemental Blast. This is good if I can take care of the Gargoyle. Now we can pump the Gargoyle a lot and feed it to his Diamond Valley. Look at that. That's what he's doing. Oh, man. Like Granite Gargoyle and Diamond Valley. That's such nice synergy. Oh, he's going up so much. He's on 20. That is insane. Anyway, now I can attack at least with everything. So that is 6, 8, 9 points of damage on the board. I could put him on 11. Uh-oh, does he have a Disharmony? Really? Oh, there's a Disharmony again. Okay, there's a counter spell. Countering away the first Disharmony. Yeah, of course, a second Disharmony. Why not? Do I have a Blue Blast? Do I? Do I? I guess I don't. Wow, these Disharmonies, man. They're, they're killer. Taking my uh, Lord, blocking the Lords on each other. I guess then he's taking three damage and I lose two creatures. Oh, that is painful. That is painful. And of course, next turn, my Flying Man's going to die to the Unstable Mutation. Oh, this is so bad. This just hurts looking at it. Like, I remember this, but it just hurts looking back at it. I'm like, oh, no. Because I had the counter backup. So I, I obviously, I thought about the option of having that Disharmony against me again, knowing that I could counter one away. But yeah, two in hand. That was pretty brutal. So now my Flying Man's going to die right to the Unstable. The good news, though, is that my opponent is not doing much else. I mean, it looks like he's kind of doesn't really have useful cards in hand. Just attacking for two here. Let's see what's going to happen. Maybe a Bolt or a Shatter. Who knows? Another Disharmony. Okay, so I guess he's got more Disharmonies in the sideboard because we know he plays two main. 
Uh, is he playing four disharmonies at the moment? That would be insane. And now he can, of course, feed it to the... Um, yeah, he can feed it to the uh, Diamond Valley. That's the combo here. So he's kind of using this harmony as a removal spell. And, of course, life gain. Wow. The disharmonies are doing so much work for him. Like, he's cleared up my entire board with disharmony almost. Yeah, and I killed one creature... You know, with the uh, with the unstable, I guess the flying man. Anyway, uh, you here playing a juggernaut. I've played a surrender Pafrit, so yeah, I can I can fly over him, deal three points of damage, but then I've got to deal with the juggernaut. I'm on nine. I am attacking. Does it mean I have another surrender in hand? Yes, it does. So playing another surrender And passing the turn here. So he's got to attack with the Juggernaut. So I can block it with the other Surrendip. Or not. Oh, man. This is, this is not working out for me. Okay, there's a Psionic Blast at least. And again, I really want to point those Psionic Blasts at my opponent's life total. But I have to keep playing them on these creatures. Or else I, I simply take too much damage. The question is though, does he have another Red Blast to counter this? It looks like that is what he's thinking about at the moment. Like, does he want to counter the Psionic Blast? That would be pretty bad. It would mean I would drop to four. Next turn would drop to three because of my Surrender. So then he has enough on a single Bolt. Look at how thin my, uh, my library is, by the way. Like, we've been playing for quite a while. This is an interesting matchup. Anyway, he is resolving uh, the Psionic Blast. He's resolving, I mean. Juggernaut is dead, taking damage from my Surrender, going to 6. He's on 16, though. Like, he's so high. I need another Unstable, I think. Attacking for 3. Going to put him on 13. Okay, there's a Lord of Atlantis. So, at least finding some creatures here to put some pressure on. Tapping three more, another Surrendip. Okay, no cards anymore in hand, but I've got eight damage on the board. So, fingers crossed, right? I'm on six, so I'm going to drop to four next turn. Untap, upkeep. Wow, and my opponent not doing anything. Attacking here. If I see another Disharmony, I'm going to go nuts, by the way. No Disharmony, luckily for me, so he's going to drop to five. There's a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Passing the turn again, and okay, that's it. Winning game number four. That means it is two against two, and we're going to go to game five. Sweet. I really thought I was toast at a certain point, but uh, I guess I was lucky. Again, Yoop, of course, finding a lot of lands there uh, also with the wheel, but hey, two, two, I'm happy. We are going to go to game number five. Game number five, here we go. The big decider. My opponent on the play, so I guess he's a slight favorite. He is taking a mulligan, though, starting with six. That's good news. Playing a mountain, passing the turn. Let's see what I can do. Card number eight. Is it going to be an island into a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident? That would be kind of nice, having a turn one play. Hey, there we go. I called it. Island into Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Six in hand. Oh, again, the desert. Are you kidding? These deserts. Seriously. They have, ah. Oh. Anyway, it got accepted, I guess. Maybe I've got a Lord of Atlantis. That would be quite sweet. I got a strip mine. Okay, that's the next best thing. Let's strip that desert. Exactly. Get rid of it ASAP. Attacking for one here. Going to put my opponent on 19. And passing the turn. There's a Diamond Valley. Okay, but the fact that he's playing out the Diamond Valley means that he's got no other mana producing land in hand. So this is actually good news for me. Another blue. It would be kind of sweet to, uh, to still win this after that 2-0. There's an Unstable Mutation. This is risky though. If he's got a Bolt, there's the Bolt. There's the Blue Elemental Blast. So that is good magic, right? Knowing I'm not going to play the unstable unless I've got counter backup. And I mean, this is a really bad start here, by the way, for you already dropped to 15. Okay, this is what he really needed. Needed this red elemental blast to take care of the creature. Bad news for me, though. So he's on 15. I'm on 20. Can I find 
Something else, another island, surrendered to fleet perhaps? Nope, just passing the turn. There's a desert again. There's an Ironclaw Orc. You know, Ironclaw Orc, it's one of those creatures that you don't want to counter, you don't want to, exactly, I want to say this, you don't want to play a Psionic Blast against it, but if you don't, you end up taking a lot of damage. So I understand this decision. Okay, and he's going to eat up his own Ironclaw Orc. That's why I don't take the damage from the Psionic Blast. So he's going to go back up to uh, 17. Playing another Island, passing to turn three cards in hand, three cards in hand for, uh, for my opponent as well. Four after the draw. And look at this. We're kind of not doing much. So two pretty aggressive decks. Just a draw and go at the moment. Yupier tapping a red though. Okay, there's a chain. So the fact that he starts to chain gives a signal to me that maybe he's got a Wheel of Fortune in hand. That he wants to empty his hand. Gonna go back up to five cards in hand. There's another island. Wow, I'm really flooded. So here, Yoop going up to six, just passing. Wow, I mean, this is so interesting. He's He's got mana issues. I'm mana flooded. Four in hand. There's another mountain now. No granite gargoyle, though. Because Oh, we do see chain lightning. I thought maybe, you know, hitting three, which is quite a nice mark for him. He can start casting those granite gargoyles. But there was a chain lightning instead. I'm also tapping three blue here. There's a surrender of free to hitting the board. Are we going to see a red elemental blast, perhaps? Yep, there's a red elemental blast. And there's a blue blast. So I guess we both just have a lot of, like, counter magic-like cards in hand, like blue blast, red blast, counter spell. Maybe he's got shatter in hand, too. Disharmony, perhaps. Disharmony would be good with the Diamond Valley, by the way. We'll see when I attack right now if he has a Disharmony. Going to take a damage, going to go to 13. Tap a blue. There's an unstable, so just going all in again. Tacking here for 6. He will drop to 11. Tapping 3. There's a disharmony. Do I have an answer? Okay, I do have a counter spell. I, I really do think he's playing with 4 disharmonies right now after sideboarding. I really think so. You just see the card so often, which is pretty cool, actually. I haven't played against a deck before, I think, that played for Disharmony. There's a Granite Gargoyle. No Counterspell from me, so just taking my turn. Going to take a damage. And my Surrender Efreet is now a 5-6, I believe. So I'm going to attack him for 5 here. If he takes the damage, which is a pretty big if, but then he would drop to six. If he blocks, he can block and eat it. That's exactly what he does. So he will go up to 13. The Diamond Valley is really good. Because now anti blocked my, my threat and he gained life. There's a Juggernaut. So, I mean, he's on 13, I'm on 12. I'm going to untap another counter, so it's now a 4-5. So I can put him on 9. Of course, taking a damage again from my surrender, dropping to 11. And it does look like I'm going to attack here, so attacking for 4. So he's going to drop to 9. Tapping 3, another surrender perhaps, another surrender per free you're hitting the board. So I can use that to block the Juggernaut. To make the trade. Or do I want to take the 5 and then attack with both creatures. Put them on 3. It is. Uh, it's risky. I don't think I should do that. Also because you then take damage from your own surrenders as well. Okay. Why don't you do this in upkeep. That's why he's putting the card back. So I said. Oh still I want to do something in your upkeep. Playing a psionic blast. I guess on the juggernaut. Like this is interesting. Again like this decision. I had two decisions to make, right? I could also play it on his life total and then 
chump block the juggernaut, make the trade juggernaut surrendered by mean. That could have been a line as well. It would go on five. There's an Iron Claw Orc. Oh man, this is this is gonna be a very, very close game. Like next turn, I can hit him for six, but I'm gonna drop to nine. He's now on 12, so I could have his life. So dropping to nine, drawing for turn. What are we gonna see? There's an island. Look at the amount of lance I have, by the way. That's pretty insane. Only one card in hand, really? What I need is a brain geyser. That would that would give me the victory if I manage to resolve a brain geyser. Attacking here with both another disharmony, seriously? Please let it not be another disharmony. He's tapping three, right? Oh, okay, no, he's just tapping one, just a desert to deal a point of damage. Because he wants to, okay. Oh, and then a bolt, and he can kill it. Playing a counter spell though, countering the bolt away. Okay, so he, what he did is he tapped his desert to deal damage to my Serenip. So now he's on six. Oh, he's gonna attack, he's gonna put me on seven. I'm gonna drop to five. Oh, what an exciting match. Now remember, my Serenip of Free with the Unstable is now gonna get another minus one, minus one counter, meaning it is a two, three. So I can hit him for five. I can put him on one, which is not enough. Only gonna attack with the one though. Gonna put him on three, so I'm gonna keep my two, three on blocking duty. Ah, oh, this is so close. And he can of course sack it to the Diamond Valley as well, like he's got some options. What is he gonna do here? Tapping. Oh, Sheevan Dragon, wow. Sheevan Dragon. That is huge. That is a big problem. This Sheevan. Oh man. Is this is this gonna grant him the victory? So let's let's see what I can do here. I'm gonna drop to three. Draw a card for turn. Another, so many lands here. Can we stop the islands? Oh, oh, am I, did I find a brain geyser? There is a brain geyser. Keeping three open. What am I hoping for? A boomerang, perhaps, right? Because then I can send back the Shivan dragon. Um, and then maybe an unstable mutation. Could that be the line of play that I'm thinking about? I could also choose to draw one card less, so I've got a control magic to play. The thing is, if I play control magic on, let's say, the Sheevan, he's going to use his Diamond Valley and eat up the Sheevan. He's going to go back up to eight. Oh, this is tricky. Because if he goes back to up to eight and I attack him with, with what I have... I'm not gonna kill him. And then he can attack me with the Iron Claw. Okay, there's, there's a Boomerang. Okay, so that part of the plan is working. So Boomerang on, on Sheevan. He's gonna eat up the Sheevan Dragon. He's gonna go back up to eight. There's another Unstable. Oh, I don't have enough though. I have seven, I believe, on the board because yeah, I have seven. I have seven points of damage. I need eight points of damage. Oh, man. And I'm thinking now, should I attack with both? Probably just should attack with one. I should attack with one, put him on two, keep the other one on blocking duty. Exactly. Because the other one is a one-two, and I need, I need that to block the Iron Claw Orc. Because I'm on three, right? So in theory... I could block the orc, then untap, right? Maybe win? Question mark? It's pretty far-fetched because also he has that diamond valley that he can use, that he can gain two extra life for. And yeah, of course, I'm really taking my time to do the math again because I'm just missing one measly point. I mean, the brain geyser did give me what I wanted it to, what I wanted to get from it, but 
in the end, it's one point that makes all the difference. But anyway, he's on two now. I'm on three life still. So if he attacks with the Iron Claw Orc, I can block with my Surrendip and potentially get another turn, right? And still win the game. Maybe. Ooh, Wheel of Fortune. Oh, ho, ho, Wheel of Fortune. Oh, man, I'm tapped out. Nothing I can do. But now I just have to pray, basically. I mean, there's a pretty big chance that he's going to find a Chain Lightning or a Bolt and finish it here. But who knows? Stranger things have happened in the game of Magic. I just got to hope for the best. He is on two at the moment. There's a mountain. A mountain. Okay. Look at that. Lots of lands. I guess he's showing his hand, by the way. So, wow. Five lands, that is, right? Exactly. Five lands. A juggernaut. And a fireball. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you got this. But man, what an exciting uh, last game. This was good. This was good. But I think I have to be honest as well. I think... When I look at the match as a whole, I think I think the red deck just was slightly better the whole time, to be honest. But um, anyway, anyway, was a good match. Was a good match. I'm a little bit disappointed here. I just needed one more turn. But uh, I think that Diamond Valley did so much work here for you. But how cool is it to see Diamond Valley and this harmony at work here? I mean, that's just fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, you for this game. I've enjoyed it. We play against each other quite a lot and you always bring, uh, bring the cool stuff, man. I appreciate it. Also, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to like, share and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then you can also, of course, become a patron of the show if you want to support the channel financially as well. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And if you become a patron of the show, you get your name in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.